there. Welcome to this edition of The Lead. I'm Anthony Montalto. This week we're teaching you about all things education, plus we'll take a look around the country with our new segment, The National Review. New legislation now allows teachers under 50 to be vaccinated as of last week. The Lead's Violet Comer Weiland looks at how this will affect schools all around Florida. As soon as the COVID-19 vaccine became available, Tonya Camerata eagerly made an appointment. To be valued, you know, as an educator who's working in pretty darn close proximity with a whole bunch of kids um, to be able to get that shot and know that I don't have to worry about getting COVID and I'm pretty happy about that. Recent legislation has allowed teachers under 50 to get vaccinated. This may push school attendance into overdrive. The order comes with contention. Teachers can only get vaccinated at federal vaccine sites. Governor Ron DeSantis' state orders only include teachers over 50. Kayla Lamb is the mother of an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, both enrolled in Floral City Elementary. Lamb supports this legislation. I think it's a good thing you're getting vaccinated or at least able to, but I don't think that it's spreading widely like everyone thought because you would think if it's spreading widely, my kids would have been quarantined at least once in the past few months, and they haven't. Tommy Rogers is a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old. They attend Idlewild Elementary. His wife teaches there. Either way, I th if they're vaccinated or not vaccinated. Camerata hopes the availability of vaccines will cause a return to in-person classes as opposed to online. I can't have labs like I normally do um, because you have half or maybe three quarters even, but you still in every single class you have kids online. Camerata received her first dose of the Pfizer vaccine from a federal site in Jacksonville last week. She will receive her second dose about two weeks from now. Violet Comber Weiland, The Lead. While little is known about COVID-19 reinfections, some studies suggest it may be possible for people to be infected more than once. As research surrounding reinfections expands, we take a look at what's currently known about recurrences in Alachua County. The possibility of COVID-19 reinfection remains a central question in understanding the pandemic. Recent studies published in the British Medical Journal and The Lancet suggest cases where individuals tested positive for the virus on two separate occasions separated by negative tests. UF Health Epidemiology Officer Dr. Nicole Iovine says UF Health has seen a few sporadic cases of potential reinfection, typically months after initial infection. We have noted uh, some of our patients uh, that had been COVID positive in the past um, have come back into the hospital and have tested positive again. And it doesn't seem like a continuation of the same um, illness because they had gotten better. Iavine says UF Health has seen under five occurrences, but she says it's likely more mild undiagnosed cases may have occurred. Uh, I think it indicates that people who have um, had past infection um, have some time that they're immune to it, um, but that that immunity likely declines over time. She says the vaccine provides a more targeted and strong immune response and encourages everyone to get vaccinated to prevent infection. A bill that would affect who gets Bright Futures scholarship money is receiving backlash. Senate Bill 86 would favor students whose major is listed as high demand in the workplace, such as those in healthcare, STEM, or trades. Students in majors not on the approved list would be ineligible to receive funding. Those who haven't chosen a degree would be limited to 60 credit hours of financial aid, half of a typical bachelor's degree. One high school senior's online petition opposing the bill has over 98,000 signatures. The bill also proposes the amount of money given be based on the state's budget. If approved, the law would impact students starting in the 2022-2023 academic year. In this week's National Review, the lead's Amy Gallo takes a look at standout events in U.S. News. She has the latest on the Derek Chauvin trial, a potential Olympics boycott, and Prince William's response to racist accusations. Seven jurors have been selected for the Derek Chauvin trial. Chauvin is the former Minneapolis police officer who is accused of the third-degree murder of George Floyd. Several prospective jurors have revealed they feel emotionally distressed while watching the video of Chauvin pinning Floyd to the ground. Juror selection will continue for the next three weeks. Opening statements are scheduled later this month. Across the pond, Prince William spoke out about the accusations of racism and bigotry made by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. William defended the British monarchy during a visit with his wife to an East London school. The prince said we're very much not a racist family in response to questions shouted at him by reporters on site. The queen released an official statement and other members of the royal family have yet to respond. 
Now on to sports. The Biden administration faces increasing pressure to boycott the 2022 Winter Olympics in China. Under President Xi Jinping's leadership, over 1 million Muslim Uyghurs and other minorities have been placed in re-education and labor camps in the northwestern region of China. Over 180 human rights organizations published a letter on February 3rd asking world leaders to boycott the Olympic Games due to China's human rights violations. Members of the U.S. government have also proposed boycotting the Games. Florida Congressman Michael Waltz introduced a resolution that calls on the United States Olympic Committee to withdraw from the 2022 Olympic Games unless the location is changed. Gore Wyman, a Chinese government spokesperson, said calls for a boycott of the 2022 Games based on human rights violations are doomed to fail. Amy Gallo, The Lead. That's it for this edition of The Lead, but more news and updates are just a click away at wuft.org. Be sure to check out our next episode on Wednesday. I'm Anthony Montalto. Have a great week.